Hello everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Mug and Play. I'm Nick, today we're playing more Beyond You, and we just said that we want to work with Yumi because she's mysterious and quiet, and I want to see more about her. I want to see what's up. Also, I just noticed recently that the looks, the if you look closely at everyone's eyes, you have like different suits. You have, you have hearts, you have spades, you have clubs and you got diamonds all right that's, I, that's a nice little touch that i noticed but anyway i think yumi and i would work well together ah you think you would yeah i think so oh aroka's not happy about that she uh she ain't feeling it okay well if you change your mind we'll be in here all right yumi moved her hands to suggest you sure like yeah she pointed to me, then shifted her hand in circles. All right, thumbs up. All right, am I am I okay? Yumi nodded, her head tilted. Yeah, yeah, I am. I laughed, unsure why she asked if I was okay. Why wouldn't I want to work with her? Haruko was my best friend, and Aiko was the smartest. But then again, Yumi hadn't had a chance to show me what she was made of yet. She could be the smartest one out of all of us, and even if she wasn't, she seemed nice. Besides, Haruko would understand, wouldn't she? Would she? We entered the practical side of the classroom last, with the other groups happily seated. I'll get the sheets, you find a spot, yeah? Yumi nodded, offering an okay hand signal. She went for the closest spot possible. When I reached the front desk where papers had been laid out, there seemed to be only one left. I exhaled, annoyed, my lips sneered. Mr. Saito was so particular about sheets, he refused to reprint them. Which meant we were down to a, down a sheet. We could transcribe the questions and, ha and hand in a loose sheet of paper, I guess. But it still had to be a shared booklet. Someone must have messed up their work or something. I walked back over to Yumi, who was drumming on the table in front of her. She lit up when I approached with a smile that seemed rare for her. Alright, it's nice. It's nice. Didn't seem unnatural, though. Rather, she suited a smile. Alright. So, bad news. We're gonna have to share that reference sheet, but I can write my answers on a piece of paper and just hand that in. Yumi tipped her head to the side, a hand flipped to punctuate the question. Why? No clue. Guess I should have been quicker. Yumi nodded solemnly, as if that were the solution. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Yumi smirked as she dug out a notebook. She had two, one for class and one for me. Oh, that's nice. Or rather, for anyone aside from Aiko, no one else spoke sign language that I knew of. She set to scrawling her question and slid the book and slid and slid the book when she was done. Why do you choose me? Why not the lovely Haruka? I thought the change of pace would be a good idea this year. So no deep, unbridled passion you're carrying for me then? I snapped a hand in my mouth as I read that <laughs> the massive sound of shock and laughter. <laughs> Yumi cackled in her unique way, her voice laden with whatever prevented her speech. It wasn't quite broken, more fragmented, like it resonated from the wrong spot in her throat. Okay, I'm sure there's nothing ominous or mysterious about that at all. That isn't it, no. Yumi put a, put a hand to her chest, mock hurt etched into her expression. <gasps> I lowballed that to you. You could have easily lost your virginity before college, and you've blown it in the least fun way. <laughs> okay, okay, I don't know what you're getting at. I snapped my other hand in my mouth as if I, as if that had killed the laughter and the blushing. The fact that she could write rather than speak had the hidden benefit of being able to be so brash. I snatched that pen. Out uh, um, uh, I don't know if this is a glitch with the game, or or what, but, uh, for somebody who doesn't say much, you sure got an awful lot of mouths, and eyes, and, um, okay, and I, I snatched the pen up and shot Yumi a look of defiance. I don't know if that's, uh, either way, it's adding to the experience. We'll just leave it at that. Don't make me regret my choice of partner, or I've got a whole year to settle that, or... Are you always this crass? Let's just keep it keep it mysterious. I've got a whole year to settle that. I've got a whole year to settle that. Yumi rolled her eyes heavily as if the very act was too much for her to handle. It was then she snatched up her pen and notebook to scrawl a retort. You realize I'm screwing with you, right? I've got that much. Yumi shrugged in response, no less smug. At least I get what this school is all about. I raised an eyebrow to her, though she failed to elaborate. Instead, she began to write down her answers for the handout. She didn't check the questions first, however. Had she done this before? The questions were rather standard. You have to answer them in order. Yumi slow blinked at me, like I was an idiot. She held up her sheet and the questions, and at a glance, it appeared to match up. 
Alright. Perhaps she had done this before. It took Yumi no time to be finished, and her posture worsened in the in the short few minutes. Just, and because I must I must I must write down all the answers to get all this shit right. Her arms were crossed and slowly sank beneath the table. She was almost parallel to the floor within five minutes. I got through most of the answers, but I had but I had to write out my own sheet. She's like, I prefer planking while I work. It makes me work better. I think this is meant to be more collaborative rather than answer yourself. But then I guess it's hard to discuss when... No, you can still discuss with me. You can write and I can interpret. Yumi remained unmoving. Either she'd fallen asleep or into disinterest. She'd, maybe she just shut down. Maybe she's secretly a robot. I don't know. Sorry if I say something stupid. I don't, I don't mean it. And I didn't know what to add. It was hard to carry a conversation when someone just opted out altogether. Especially when she had a reason to be quiet in the first place. It was nice of her to have the patience to write it all, though. Then again, she had, she shouldn't have to write. People should try to understand her on her own terms, right? Perhaps she would have been better with Aiko after all. At least they could easily communicate. It would probably be more fun for Yumi rather than dragging my dead weight in conversation. Yumi sat up, cracking her neck with a shift and cracking her head either way. Just... Maybe she is a robot and she was just she was just powering back on and all you can hear from her mouth is just She reached for her notebook, then she'd written to, the one she'd written in to me before. The virginity thing was a joke, was a little too much for day one, huh? I shrugged a shoulder, smiling still. It was a joke after all. Tone deaf doesn't come through text too well. Yumi considered me for a long moment before she tipped the book back to face her to add to her previous statement. I'll make sure to write in angry font if I'm angry. The word angry, thicker than the rest. The lines nearly cut through the writing. So like she just writes into the next page. You can pose next to the writing, or I can try to learn sign language if you'll help me. That had taken her by surprise. She lingered for a moment, and then frowned, waving her hand. I, that's one hell of a frown again. Okay, just, just kind of glitch. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. I've tried to teach it before. No one ever remembers it. I would. Yumi shot me a look of pity, her lips downturned. She closed her notebook, the one she'd been writing to me in. Behind us, I could hear the other half of our group locked in discussion about the lab rules. I had to wonder how we'd be expected to reconvene into a group of five, but whatever. I was with Yumi right now. I'm serious, I'd learn. Yumi lost that edge she had before where she joked and teased. She just seemed, seemed upset. Was it something I'd said? I thought trying to learn sign language would make her happy. Then again, just saying what I want to learn isn't the same as putting in the effort. I promise, I'll learn some sign language. You'll see! Yumi turned to look at me, rather than out the window. She smiled, sadly, and shrugged a shoulder. Before I could speak, she raised her hand. She made a motion for me to zip my lips. She's like... Her posture straightened up, and she began to adjust her papers. It was then that Mr. Saito walked into the practical side of the classroom. Had Yumi been able to hear him coming? Collect your work! You'll be comparing with the rest of your group! Thursday will be a case study, so step towards practical! I need to be sure I can trust you to work within this space given the number of students, so don't disappoint me! Yumi packed away her notebooks and sped back towards the main classroom in seconds. I still had my supplies across the table, surprised by that request to rejoin our groups. I wish that day one of actual classes had been a little more exciting, but spending more time with Yumi was nice. I felt like I had said something wrong in wanting to learn sign language for her, but once she saw me using it, maybe that'd be enough? Hmm? Who knows, Dandleton? You'll just have to put in the effort. Show, don't tell. Especially when it comes to sign language. You have to show and not tell. It's the whole point of sign language. Who knew how many other people had promised her the same thing only to forget altogether? Okay, yeah. That's, that's fair. She's like, I've heard that before. Or, I've had people fail to be able to sign that to me before. I wouldn't forget. I'll show her! With my hands. Class wound down, which left me in my routine. Usually it meant I'd wait for her by the front gate of the school. The quiet was good. It gave me time to think about the changes this year. I think Yumi is smarter than she lets on. Yeah. Excuse me, Dandleton? Oh, oh my. Hello. Hello, new friend. A girl approached me, same year, and I recognize her. Hey, Isla. While Haruka was my only friend at school, Isla was a, well, I'm not sure what we are, but we're on good terms. She was too busy with being class president in her studies, and we fought over that often. She's the closest thing I had to competition for a top student, and that was enough to put an end to us. She's quiet right now, anyway, but she's rarely quiet for long. 
I need to talk to you. We're talking right now, aren't we? Privately. She sounded nervous when she clarified what she wanted to speak in private. Before I can answer either way, she grabbed me by the hand. We both got long limbs and height, so the attempt at control is messy at best. We're just... It's like, no, your hand goes over here. Okay, there, there we go. All right, let's go this way. Still, I let her guide me, even though she's not got much in the way of control. What's up, friend? I only seem to have somewhere in mind, though she didn't say as much. Instead, we rushed towards the school and into the closest building. Okay, what's what's up? The library was ghostly quiet, without the usual rustle of papers and the clack of keyboards. No one was in here. Not much use for the library, given it was after hours and the only the only the second day of classes. Besides, most people use the internet. I stepped further inside, gawking at the eerie quiet of the disused library. The air, the air was stale and still. I haven't seen you in ages. Not since last year. You could have visited. And you could have visited me. That's not what I need to talk to you about. I don't want to fight. I actually had a favor I wanted to ask of you. A favor? This is important, and it has to stay between us, okay? Just say what you need, Isla. Being cryptic doesn't help your case. It's about Minami School, the fire more specifically. I stared at Isla, unsure of what she could possibly mean, or rather, what she wanted from me. I've been asked to keep an eye on some of the girls from that school. The, um, the ones that you're partnered with. I know their school burned down, but yeah, why keep an eye on them? There's more to it. I just don't know if I can tell you about it. Well, well, I can. I... I heaved a sigh, more relaxed now that we were alone. <sighs> it started during the holidays. I was given the role of class president. She flashed a hand towards her chest and at the pin on her blazer. See this button right here? It means I'm better than you. I was unsure how her role as class president affected the fire, but I listened. Crossed my arms over my chest and tipped my head. I was asked to come to the campus the week before school started. I thought it was about my duties to the school, or maybe they wanted to take photos. I scoffed, <laughs> unable to keep that quiet. She smiled in spite of herself. They do that for the purpose of staff, or the yearbook. In any case, it was a private concern by someone within the school. They were worried about the students who have transferred here. Not all of them, and to be honest, I think it's just paranoia. They think one of the girls started the fire at the school. More specifically, they believe Kana was responsible. They don't have any proof of this, just speculation. I narrowed my eyes at Isla, unsure of what to even ask of her. Kana had seemed the most upset about the school burning down. Kana was seen talking to herself often and in strange parts of the school. She's not hurt anyone that they know of, but she's been put into therapy multiple times since childhood. I waved a hand at Isla, my defense is raised. Listen, just because someone goes to therapy doesn't mean they're a danger to anyone. If anything, therapy is a sign of wanting to get better. I'm just telling you what they told me for the sake of context. What I've wanted to ask you is if you'd be able to work more closely with Kana to keep an eye on her for me? Aiko is the top student like us, so she'd have no reason to attack the school. As for Yumi, she's not smart enough to pull off something like that. Uh, okay, that's not a nice thing to say. She's gotten this far through her sports achievements. She'd be the first to admit that. Hmm. That's what they told me in any case. Why not have Haruka keep an eye on her? She's a group. She's in a group with her too. Do you really think Haruka can be trusted with something like this? She'd probably lie and say they all did it. Isla huffed out, her bangs ruffling with the whoosh of air. Besides, just, just. Whew. Besides, when has Haruka ever listened to me? She's never liked me, not since you and I, um... Look, I won't, I wouldn't ask you to do this if it wasn't important. And like I said, chances are that this isn't even true. But I'm working with someone else. Then change! I don't care if you have to do it. Make it happen. Once they find out who the culprit was, you can change back. But for now, this is beyond me or you, and you need to understand that. Just think about it. You want to keep Haruka safe, don't you? Do the right thing. I'll check in with you to see what you find out. And feel free to text me. We should do coffee again sometime soon. <laughs> That's more threatening than anything else. I feel weird not acknowledging that we'd gone on a few dates, but we both got too busy for school or with school for that. She danced around it, but it was one kiss? Two? Oh, oh man. Dandleton get some dates. It felt so long ago, and I'm not sure how to chase her down. Seems I have plenty on my plate already. Why would that duty fall onto me? <laughs> duty means poop. 
Sorry, I, I saw an opportunity for a poop joke and I went for it. To be honest, it almost sounded like Isla was jealous. She ended up in the other science class. If they wanted Isla to keep an eye on Kana, wouldn't they have just put them in the same class? And she'd expected me to drop whoever I was working with for Kana? Or she made Kana out to be an arsonist? Either way you cut it, it doesn't sound that reliable. And it seems like something the police would handle, not me. Oof. That was... Interesting to say the least, but... I don't know. What do you what do you think? Tell me tell me in the comments if if you think we should switch from 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 Yumi to Kana, but like we already made a promise to to Yumi that we would learn sign language and be her friend. So, I don't know. I'm I'm conflicted. So, you know what? I'm going to leave this up to all of you in the comments. Leave a comment below tell me if you think we should switch to working with Kana to keep an eye on her for we should just switch with Yumi personally I want to stick with Yumi we made we made a promise and who for all we know Isla might be might just be peanut butter and jealous for all we know it's all speculation and yeah it's like and it's like Dandelson thought wouldn't they just put her in the same class as us so she can keep an eye on her I don't know but let me know in the comments below in the meantime thank you so much for hanging out with me and if you want to hang out with me some more then you can hang out with me on twitch over at twitch.tv slash mug and play where I play games live it's a fun time it's great you'll enjoy it I enjoy it and I would enjoy spending time with all of you but thank you so much I love you all and I'll catch you later all right bye bye everybody have a good one